Thank you so much for your time, Sal. I understand that it's a very busy day for you, but I'd just like to get a quick update first on what's the, on the, on the situation in Nigeria. So the, thank you very much. It's important to inform Nigerians of what is going on. So the situation is over the past three days, uh, colleagues from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control working with colleagues uh, at the Lagos state government and Ogun state government have really been identifying. We've identified all the contacts, listed all of them. We're now in touch with them daily to make sure that they don't uh, have any symptoms. If they do, there will be a certain list, uh, protocol will be followed in terms of what happens. But for now, none of them have become symptomatic. It's early days. We'll follow them for 14 days. So that's the hard work that is going on right now in a very organized way because we have got to provide, uh, make sure that all of them are comfortable, all of them have a, a place to be isolated while we uh, follow them, follow up with them daily. At the same time, you know, people keep traveling in and out of Nigeria. So as we focus on Lagos and Ogun, we're also working, still working with hotel services in Lagos and the four other international airports in Nigeria. Enugu is closed at the moment, so there are three others, uh, trying very hard to make sure that as we focus on Lagos, we don't take our eyes off the ball from other points of entry. And uh, in addition to that, the final point is just like individual, sometimes even with the best uh, procedures at the airport, we may not be able to identify this individual because he may be well. So it took an astute physician that recognized that this guy had traveled to Italy, had symptoms, and he did the right thing by calling us and saying, listen, guys, this is the situation I have. So we really need all Nigerians, especially healthcare workers, to help us on this journey, especially for people coming back from the five countries where we have community transmission at the moment. I'll close by listing those five. It's China, Iran, South Korea, Italy, and Japan at the moment. And we may add to that list as we uh, gain a better understanding of what is happening across the world today. All right, but I would like to understand, because I'm looking at the report you put out on yesterday on your website, and it says you have finalized and shared the National Incident Action Plan. I'd like to know what that plan entails. Yeah, so that's a plan, really, for all the partners and all the agencies involved in this response. So, you know, the response, yes, is being led on by uh, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, but there are multiple government agencies that have a role to play, from the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, Port Health Services, uh, Immigration Services, our security forces, uh, tertiary hospitals in every state capital in Nigeria, the states with the points of entry, the five states with the international points of entry. So we have collectively put a plan together, with, which we're now operationalizing in terms of preparedness in some areas, and response in others. So really, this is a set of protocols. We always have a generic plan for emergencies like this. What happens is when there's an actual event, we adapt that to the individual event and make sure that responsibilities are well allocated to the different parts of government and the different parts of uh, government, not only at the federal, federal level, state levels, that have a role to play in the response to an outbreak like this. And one final point I'd like to make is, you know, at times like this, we all need to remember that there's so much government can do. So we all need to play a role. And health security is really everybody's business. So I think CNBC is very important because you're targeted at the private sector a lot. The private sector, corporate Nigeria, has a lot to do. And to be honest, they have done far too little in working with us because the biggest risk, an outbreak like this, um, uh, shows and throws up to the country is its risk in addition to the health risk. It's a risk to the economy. And private sector in Nigeria, corporate Nigeria, has stood up. They have not come forward to work with us, to make plans, to support the work we're doing, to ensure that we can keep the country going, keep the economy going, and make things uh, safe uh, for all of us. So this is really an opportunity for the private sector to come on board and support the work we're doing. Telecoms can make it easier for us to send data. Uh, oil and gas can help us with logistics. There's a lot they can do that they're absolutely not doing at the moment. And that's my challenge to them. Yeah, but I understand your challenge there, but I, if, has this been articulated by your agency well enough to know for, for, for the private sector to know exactly how they can partner and help you know, in this? Because I know everybody's a stakeholder in this economy. Absolutely. We've been reaching out to them for the past four years. But in peacetime, nobody cares. You know, right now, they're reaching us, out to us, asking us, how can, how can we provide advice 
for them to protect themselves. That's not what we want. We want them to support the work we're doing to protect all of Nigerians because the economy depends on all Nigerians. We are the users of the telecoms. So why don't they provide us the data to share our information across the country? So really, we've been pushing them, we've been writing them, appealing to them. Nobody has, has come to the table. So now is the time. At least if they haven't come to us in peacetime, let them come to us now and offer their support and, and offer it in a sustainable way. We're not asking for money. We're not asking for handouts. We're asking for corporate social responsibility that all of them need to do so that we can assure our collective health security and make sure we're in a stronger position to keep Nigeria safe. We can't be sending public health data uh, across the uh, country from Bayelsa to Sokoto, paying commercial rates. Where do we get the money from? These are small things that they can come in and support us with. Logistics, we now need to carry, make sure every state in the country has stockpiles of personal protective equipment uh, uh, to protect themselves. How do we get this across the country in a very difficult trade? Many, many aspects of corporate Nigeria have the resources, have redundant capacity in warehouses, redundant capacity in their trucks. They should come forward and let us work together and find a way to provide Nigerians the assurance that we need to protect our health security, protect our economy, and keep Nigeria moving. All right, then. Thank you so much for your time on the show today, Dr. Chike. Here was a very interesting, strong call there for the private sector. We'll, we'll, we'll continue to monitor the progress there and see how things play out. Uh, I'll be speaking to Dr. Chike here, who is the Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control.